Hi, how's it going? I'm Alex. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Berna HD um, Pepper Pistol. That's what we call them. Uh, we're going to take a look at them. It's a less lethal option, and so that's kind of some thought-provoking uh, material right there for you. Um, you know, the, the idea of less lethals getting more popular, and if you look at it, the, the market is uh, less tapped into, really. So th we've got all these new innovative inventions coming out, and what the Berna HD is, is a pistol slash launcher, whatever you want to call it. And the big deal about the Berna HD is it's the first um, 68 caliber paintball pistol in a smaller frame size. They claim that it's a um, micro compact or whatever have you, a subcompact. Um, so let's take a look at it. Uh, they ship, ship this to you for $350. Um, and so, and I think I'll be going on, should I go ahead and just talk about my experiences with the company and kind of... I would say so, yeah. Get that out of your system. Okay. Well, so, um, so one thing I wanted to do was I wanted to see if Berna would let me, uh, review one of these. So I shot them an e email, said, hey, can you send one to me? I'd love to review it. I think this is a great product you got. I think that it's a step in the right direction in terms of, uh, providing a less lethal option that could be perceived as reliable and all that. I think it, I think it's a, a cool market that's growing, and uh, it's new. Um, so I, I, I basically sent away to Berna and asked them. I said, hey, can you send me a, uh, one of your pistols? I'd love to do a review. I'm affiliated with Peace, Love, and Guns, and we're starting to look into less lethal options and covering them because it is kind of exciting because it's new to the market. So they were they said no, we don't have any promotional stuff to give away. Uh, we we aren't we don't have anything promotional to give away. The best we can do you for is a 15% discount. And I said that's cool, man. They cut the price down quite substantially. Um, so I, I I paid 300 for this, and they quickly got back to me and were like. Hey, here's your tracking number. I mean, the whole way through, they they, they let me know where it was at, where, where it was headed, and it was. Uh, I mean, it got to me within four days. I was like, awesome. Um, I pulled it out of the box and um, immediately I loaded it, got it ready to go, and I drove home. I was ready to fire it, and I go to fire it, and I, it fires the first round, and the trigger stays in the locked back position. It failed completely to return the trigger and l allowing for the next shot. Um, so more or less I, I ended up uh, uh, making them aware of it and it took a little bit for for them to get back to me or whatever have you and they ended up um, saying hey no problem warranty we'll ship you a new one. I said awesome uh, I'd really love to give this a try. They shipped me a new one and uh, the new one was having issues with the trigger as well to where it was locked. Um, it would not, the trigger would not uh, fully uh, seat the, the, the round, it closed the breaches, so to speak. Um, it wouldn't do all that. So I, I messed with it, messed with it, messed with it, and I ended up getting it to cycle. Um, it's been cycling ever since. It's the first gun I've ever had that, you know, had this kind of problem that, you know, remedied itself, I guess. But I, I noticed that there's some discrepancies. So I'll go through. I'm going to go ahead and open up this package and kind of run you through what you get. And well, I'll still, I'm going to simultaneously cover m my entire experience with this. And we'll, we'll kind of go about it through there. Um, so this is the Berna HD um, in all its glory. It comes with you know, uh, a, a very professional case. You know, you've got this uh, open cell thumb, nice padded, uh, nice little hard rigid case. You've got an instruction manual. You've got these little detents on the bottom of your mags. That way you can color coordinate your mags for what rounds are loaded. Um, you can see right here, these are live pepper rounds. They're loaded in the mag. Um, so I guess I'll cover likes, things that I like about it. I like the size comparatively speaking to other pepper ball launchers. This is a good size. It's, you know, about your standard, uh, subcompact length, um, and size. Uh, it's got a little bit of thickness, a little bit chunky. One thing they, they did write was this over molding on the grips. They did a good job with that. It feels very, um, it doesn't feel tacky, but it feels like what you would expect out of like, you know, a hoke grip 
um, it's, it, 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 it grips your hand and it does so very effectively. Um, that's one thing that I really like about it. Um, when you gas it up, when you put gas in the cylinder, you see that? See, that's something that to be noted. Uh, did you see the way that that round just fell out right there? Normally, you would have to press the detent, and the detent would eject that round, okay? It would, it would end up dropping that round, okay? This one that they sent me, this is the second gun that I've received from them, and I was told that he grabbed a new one off the, uh, off the counter and ran a mag through it. This, this is the second one I got, and this is the second one that I had problems with the triggers. Anywho, so that's something to be noted. The, the detent is a lot weaker. See how it just drops them out? That's something to be noted. So no longer, uh, so it's, it's, it's got a, a totally separate problem than the first one. Um, so I, I'll, I'll touch on that real quick since we're, we're there. Um, the, um, you know, I had called the guy, the first pistol that I had sent well, back. Go over the battery of arms first so they kind of understand when you. Okay. Yeah. Go over battery. Battery of arms is, is pretty simple. Load your mags up with your, um, your, your ammunition that you're firing. And that's one cool thing about this is that it has a, a little bit of a diverse ammunition supply that you can practice with, whether it be solid rounds, whether it be pepper rounds, whether it be inert powder rounds, that's kind of cool, right? Um, and one thing that a powder pepper charge allows us to do is it, is, it allows a little bit of distance. It allows the, 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 the irritant, the pepper or OC, to travel far and impact and do its job. Um, so battery of arms goes like this. You take this, you take your, uh, it's got a little Allen wrench right there, and that is what you would unscrew and screw in. You put in your CO2, and then you screw this back in and crank it down. That's, I would like to make an observation. What's that? Um, it's interesting that loading the pistol, mm -hmm. or unloading the pistol conversely, requires that you use a sort of Allen key integrated into the magazine, but that you have to get in front of the muzzle to do that. It's a little silly in my opinion. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah you're going to have to get in the front of the muzzle regardless because of just the way gas guns are designed. That's pretty typical of any paintball gun or anything. I, I agree with you. It's not optimal. And as a matter of fact, there's a lot of guys in the pre-charged pneumatic community that if there's a manometer that measures the pressure, okay, they don't like that. They don't like the fact that you should have to look near the muzzle to know how much pressure you have on it. So that it's, that's valid. Um, so let's go to the battery of arms, the design of this thing. Load a CO2 in here, okay? It's an 8 gram, not to be confused with the 12 gram, okay? So they're harder to find, and Burner would prefer that you order it from them. Um, so l let's talk about this mag tool. I like it. It, it functions appropriately. I thought that this would be a little bit weak. I think that they executed that appropriately. It, they pulled it off. It works. Um, the other way they could go about it is by having a flip tab that you could flip up and have a little key and unscrew it that way. That's another way of going about it. Anywho, so um, you tighten down your CO2. Now you've got gas in the gun, okay? It's got a safety that looks similar to that of a 1911 and whatnot. Except, um, so when it's in the upward position, though, you're, you're in a safety position, okay? And when you're in that safety position, you can puncture the CO2 by pulling the trigger. And that's one thing that's neat about this design. It doesn't puncture the CO2, thus rupturing it, thus um, leaving pressure on the line that can therefore bleed off. You have that ability to store this indefinitely, okay? So... When it's in the safe mode, when you pull the trigger, you are puncturing the cartridge. Now you have a live gun. And when it's in the safe mode, the ball will not come out of the, 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 the muzzle. It's, you know, it's a safe mode. Um, so you can get the gun into action. You can get gas on the gun by pulling the trigger. Now, to fire the gun, you pu pull down and you pull the trigger and it fires. Or you can subsequently have the gun in the fire position and pull the trigger and it will puncture simultaneously the CO2 and it will also fire the first round. The problem that I've noticed with this, that, that, and I've noticed this through several, several mags, is the first shot, it, it basically is a transitional shot 
and it basically does not get the full power of gas that it should. So technically, you'll have one ball go low, the first shot it'll be like, poop, and then the next four are p full powered shots, pow, 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 pow. Um, so remember that number, four shots after that, okay? Um, that's that's kind of the battery of farms there. Uh, I don't I don't necessarily like the fact that it does that. I don't like the fact that when it's time to fire it, um, you you have that transitional um, thing. No matter what, though, it is it's basically a long double action with what I would assume is like a 12 pound trigger pull. Um, that's something to be noted. Another thing to be noted is I have small hands, but uh, for females, I think that this is a really large grip frame, and if I pass it around to anyone around here, they, they would agree that this is a pretty large grip frame. And when, when you when you start engaging the trigger, I mean, you can you can see that you know my fingers, you know, there's not much. I mean, it takes a bit of reach to get to that trigger and get it back. I just think that that's worthy of noting. Anywho, so I don't necessarily care for that battery of arms. Uh, yeah. Uh, in a heated moment, someone goes to pull it out, it's in a safety position, and then, okay, well, I pull it out, and then I click the safety off, and then I get a first round that is, you know, not full power. I, I don't like that. And then four, four follow-up shots. I don't know. And I'm, not, I'm not liking that. Uh, uh, th then another thing that I want to start talking about with, with the mags, the mags hold five rounds, okay? When you insert a mag into the gun, it automatically chambers the round. You can see the round on the ball loaded indicator, which is also the detent, okay? When you do that, it loads around automatically in the chamber. You have five rounds. So hypothetically, if you do a speed reload, right, and you fire three, four shots, and you pull the mag out and put a fresh mag in, you're gonna crack a pepper ball, or you're gonna cause some kind of internal damage because it's designed to have a maximum of five, and you still have one chambered, so you put six in the gun inadvertently by trying to do a speed reload. So what that means is you have to fire all the rounds before inserting a new mag. So pow, 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 pow. And or download all your reloads so that you can do a tactical reload. You, right, exactly. So and uh, like Will just brought up, if you wanted to do a speed reload, you would have to carry a spare mag with four rounds. Um, one thing that I want to note is that the runner-up and something that you will be seeing on this channel is the uh, JXP or J JPX. You'll be seeing the JPX. Or we just had a soda accident occur. Had a soda explode. Like Chernobyl. Fuck. Okay, so that might have actually cut me. Yeah, they just exploded in my hand. It hurts a little bit. How bad is it? Yeah, it's not bad. So we're, we're dealing with a, a crisis here. We've got Pepsi, Pepsi cans exploding. So yeah, so this has been sitting in the sun all day and it actually did this to me. Um, it exploded in my hand just now. Cool, huh? I just got Pepsi fragged. This is quick clot. I don't need quick clot. I'm not putting that shit on here. The Berna HD is the best weapon. It beats any firearm. As a matter of fact, I'd go as far to say that the burn is going to be the future weapon. I feel like all militaries in the world should embrace this weapon, and all the wars will end simultaneously. As the entire battlefield is covered in pepper, pepper spray, just pepper. And everybody's just on the ground crying and washing each other off with milk. <laughs> milk, tr <laughs> milk trucks like arriving. So I like the mag release. The mag release is relatively low profile so that you don't snag it on anything and inject your mag. Uh, button comes out like this. It's just, it's low profile. I think that's pretty ideal. I think that they nailed that. Let's go back to what sucks about the mags. Uh, the mag is like this, right? It's got this little follower, okay? This little um, tiny uh, detent. And when you press it like that, um, it ejects all the ammo. Th that that's a really silly design. Just I mean, utterly si silly. Just ridiculous. And the reason I say that is because if you get one of these and you're practicing, okay, and you're using your little practice ammo and stuff like that, and you're catching these balls in a towel, that way they don't get deformed or misshapen. Uh, you load it up. You go to fire it. Um, Right, and you do a speed reload with a spare mag that you happen to be carrying that only has four rounds in it because you can't, you know, do a speed reload. 
you hit this and then it just goes like this and ejects all the ammo, you know? I like the, the fact that it does have a very nice grip. It's a little bit of a thick gun. Uh, I think though that with the five round capacity and the first round, I mean, in an emergency situation, in an emergency situation, you're going to want to use this gun rapidly. You're going to want to rapidly deploy it. So you click off your safety, you go to shoot, and the first round's not going to count. So you're really going to have to depend on those other four rounds. The Burner HD is good for 20 feet, is what I would say in my, my, my estimation. Uh, in, at 20 feet, I measured it out, and the spread's like this. So that's, that's about chest level. So regardless, I wouldn't feel comfortable using this over 20 feet. Uh, the safety, if I was to keep this, and I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to send it back at this point, even though it's been able to get rounds out, it's having an issue with the detent, as previously said. Um, it's dropping balls. I actually had one come out the barrel. One thing we'll quickly note on is that the sights, although there are sights there, they're kind of crude. And I handed this to a gun enthusiast. His first time holding it, the first thing he noticed is he was like, wow, those sights are kind of crude. I know that this isn't, I know that this is a short barrel smooth bore pistol, okay? I know it's a, a short barrel uh, smooth bore pistol that's, you know, firing a paintball round and it's running on a CO2 platform. So all those things added together equals not the best accuracy. You've got something that the standard deviation between shot to shot and then you also have ammo. And that's another thing I want to talk about real quick. Berna says do not use any ammo that's not their ammo, okay, because they have specific bore tolerances in their barrels. One thing I just want to show you real quick is, is and this is with all their solid rounds, you can see sprue, sprue points, and you can see the, the seams of the, of the lines and another sprue point. Um, this is on all their rounds. This is not premium ammunition. It may be their specification. The gun might fire it. I'm just saying, though. And one more thing, just from an injection molder's point of view, if I were to cut this round open and polish it, would I see air bubbles in there? Because that happens when they're molding rounds like these. You get what's called micro porosity, and that's going to affect your accuracy when you're shooting. I don't think that it's, you know, that premium is what I'm saying. I don't think this is premium ammo. It might be to their specifications, and like I said, they might want to have, you know, the market in terms of their 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 users and users coming back to them to buy ammo um, another thing that I'm gonna go ahead and show you since we're talking about ammo quality levels the first uh, can canister the first little vial that they gave me of the Berna black pepper powder uh, it was completely gray inside it looked literally like a pepper shaker and when I opened it I was immediately exposed to all of the all of the CES Berna pepper uh, it got in my nose, and it, it was bad news. It was it was very effective, but from a customer standpoint, not something that one would want to have to go through. Um, not during just loading up the gun. Um, that's something that I want to bring up. Look here. This is not scripted. This I just noticed this. This is an actual round where the seams are actually coming apart. It's actually coming apart at the seam. This could jam the gun. This could have an issue that would result in a, in a failure, okay? That's, and this was with their last batch too. And the gentleman that I spoke to said, hey, we're on it, we're trying to get a shake test simulator. Maybe we need to add a piece of foam because these are meant for seven rounds and uh, that's because we're gonna come out with a seven round magazine. Hey, that's cool, man. I just, and, but when we look at all these rounds, you can kind of see that it's not, it's not a, it, it is not a precision ammo. It is not, and you can actually see the, the powder, the burnout powder kind of on my hand. Uh, yeah. And even handling that mag now, some of that dust gets in the mag. And now we've got something that could pose a potential problem later on down the road. Um, like I said, look, you can actually see me squishing it back together. That's not, that's not acceptable for a, for a, uh, a security device. That's not acceptable for a life-saving device. Remember, guys... Guns, guns are like parachutes, okay? When you need one, you really need one. And you need one to work perfectly, flawlessly, all throughout. So, like I said, we, 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 we combined ammo that's quality levels aren't there. Um, and then we combined a battery of arms and 
the trigger system that's been having problems. Another thing is when I talked to the gentleman from customer service, he basically had told me that they had a number of guns in. A number of guns in that were getting their valves changed out because people were firing a mag and then during the firing process letting the pistol sit and then the mag was the 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 co2 the gas had been leaking out of the guns so they were changing the valves and i'm guessing seals out that way they could uh, use a higher strength seal quality something that would seal better so they weren't just you know he he didn't um confirm with me that they were having trigger problems so but here again, I've gotten two guns that have had some kind of issue with the loading and firing mechanism. And then on top of it, they're changing, you know, valves and stuff like that. There's there's something there. But one thing that I, I do want to say is when I started shooting this gun, and I started uh, shooting practice rounds out of it, uh, and this, this right here is how you mark, how it's marked, which ones are your actual live rounds. Um... But when I started shooting, okay, and I started shooting the uh, practice rounds out of it, and I was, you know, I had a nice little uh, backstop set up and built out of a cardboard box and a towel, and I was practicing, and I did, for a little while, I did some groupings where I was shooting cardboard and getting, there. the groupings were pretty tight. They were pretty impressive at, at 20 feet. Um, I liked what I saw, and I, I feel like this, this could be a really good design. I told Burn I said, you know, you send me a pistol that's good, I'll fork out the money, man. You send me a pistol that's going to that's gonna just, you know, work. But I feel like this system, I don't think that it's me being overcritical. I feel like this system, they, they kind of rushed it. I feel like it's not worked out. Um, you know, I, I, I feel like that some of the little subtle details, when you add all the details together you get something that doesn't necessarily, that's not as reliable as they're making it out to be. Um, one thing to be noted is the barrel itself, when I pull the trigger, I'll see if I can't get this on. I've got the gun on safety. I do have a CO2, so I will be actuating it uh, and effectively bringing that CO2 to life. But I, I want you guys to see this. So here we have an empty. It should be empty. I looked in it. It's empty. Um, when I pull the trigger, it will um, puncture the CO2 and but not discharge any gas or around um, but watch this barrel see that it's it's an articulating barrel the barrel moves backwards and that's what closes the that's what closes the breech and loads the round and it si simultaneously fires it i just think that you know this design uh it's kind of it kind of makes for a sticky trigger because you're actually having to pull the barrel back and 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 fire it drop your hammer and if you look in there i i just i don't feel like if you got dirt and debris in there from a religious everyday outside the waste carry i don't feel like this is going to hold up all that long I, I just don't know um i like i said there's subtle elements about this gun that don't sit quite right with me so we'll, we'll do solids just for the, the the principle of groupings and speed reloads One more thing about the Berna, the Berna doesn't follow the regular lines that a most pistols have in terms of its trigger guard dimensions. So I tried looking for a concealed carry holster for it, like something like Uncle Mike's, and I wasn't able to find any Uncle Mike's holsters that would fit it. So, and this was pretty much just what Academy had. I couldn't find anything. So, and this is honestly the only way I'd carry something like this and utilize it. And it seems like a lot of people are open carrying it. Just throwing that out there. I'm going to go ahead and draw. I'm not using a holster right now. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, this is just tucked in here. Okay. Shooter, are you ready? Ready. Threat. Go. Safety off. Well, oh, we got oh. a crack in the TV. Definitely cracked the TV. Let's do that. Let's shoot steel. Yeah. So we can get a beam. Shooter, ready? Ready. Shoot. Safety down. This is pretty impressive, I guess. I like that. Yeah, so, like I said, some of my experiences with this, I mean, in terms of shooting it, you know, and shooting the solids and practicing with it have been good. Here again, my caveat lies with the fact that I'm not certain about the, like I said, the pepper rounds, the quality of them. It kind of puts a hitch in it. 
but I, I do love shooting it. I think that it shoots relatively well. I mean, that's that's about what we could expect for with a pistol. I mean, what do you yeah. think, Will? Yeah, it's about 25, 30 feet. So let's uh, do some inert, shoot some inert at a tree or something, because everybody wants to see some puffs. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and degas it, and you want to do this slowly, always, because it is under pressure right now. We're going to go ahead and... And it'll have a hiss. And really, I could have gotten more rounds out of this, but just due to um, time constraints that we have today, that's that's about what I'll be doing. So I'll throw that there, and then we'll use this one that um, Berna supplied us with, and we'll go ahead and screw that on. Like I said, it, this by screwing it in is not actually um, puncturing the. Um, it's not puncturing the CO2. The CO2 gets punctured when we pull the trigger. So I'll go ahead and tighten it down. Okay, and it's just till you get it snug. Um, I'll put it on safety, and then what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of uh, inert powder and see how that goes. I just go like that. Simple, simple. Keep it simple, guys. That's the truth of it, you know. And we'll try not to hit the thing. I find it best to put your thumb to where you're actually having to put your thumb down. I think if they added a lot more spring tension there, that would probably be better. That might mitigate some of the problems that we've been having. And since I'll do a speed reload, I'm also going to load up another set of solids. Yeah, I don't know how viable it is to carry it. Like I said, because of the sensitivity of the feed, the, the feed lip right here, this, this ball detent, I don't know how well you could actually carry this in, a, in, a, in any kind of fashion. And like I said, a speed, re, a speed reload or you know, a tactical reload, like I said, you clip that and it's just going to shoot the balls everywhere. So, yeah, like literally I, I just did that accidentally trying to put it in my pocket and it ejected two rounds. <laughs> my back so I, I can't recommend it can't recommend it maybe if they made a, a holster exactly for it and it has big well, external my, dimensions my, and kind of tracks so that right. you can go down and in. Th th that would be easier than tooling up and just fixing the real problem but like having one that has to slide down to be able to release it or something you know just what i'm saying is something internal to where once it interfaces it's like a mag disconnect and now the magazine becomes live i don't know it's just thrown out there Right now, what I'm going to show you, though, that's what I was going to say. Right now, what I'm going to show you, though, is I'm going to fire it, okay, and I'm going to click it into fire mode, and we will puncture the CO2 and fire it at once, and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about, about how the round has less power on the first round. Hopefully, you notice that. If not, we'll try and capture that. Shooter, are you ready? Ready. Threat. Pull it. Okay, so not really where I was aiming, but... That was definitely... Definitely, definitely a uh, lower velocity. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do the back-to-back -back stacking. Go ahead, bring it up. So that was kind of like, they were all really close, but you, I only really got one ding during that. But here again, that's the, that's the shooter, not the pistol necessarily. So kind of all in all, let's, let's kind of start summing it up. Uh, the Berna... HD. Um, I think that they're having issues with quality controls with the guns, with the mechanics, with the ammunition. I'll just go on record saying that. Uh, but I also think that um, they're headed in a good direction. I think that they're trying to, to come together and bring a quality product. But I don't think that... Um, I don't know. One thing that I, uh, I will also say is... is as soon as I had a problem with my Berna HD, it started to seem like the communications between me and the company started declining. They wouldn't return my calls, and they weren't returning my emails. I emailed the, the CEO myself, no returned email. Um, and then it got to the point where I had to call the customer support gentleman and be like, hey, what's going on? And he told me that they had files that got mixed up. They weren't sure what was going on. They got a couple you know, a handful of pistols back or something like that. And so 
Then I got this pistol, and it was having issues with the trigger. Like I said, the detent doesn't, it's not as strong as the last detent. Um, so there's something not 100% about this. It does fire. I managed to get it to fire after sitting on the couch, and I was annoyed and pissed off, and I kept going like this, and eventually something freed up, and now the pistol will fire. And, and it, it's been doing so pretty flawlessly. One thing I've noticed, though, is this pistol, you can't just, you know, pull the trigger slow, and, like, you won't always get, you have to be pulling it pretty much, you have to be pulling it fast. It's got, it's got a specific speed that it likes to go at. And so, I, I, don't, I don't know. All in all, I think that it, I don't know. I, I like it. I want to like it. Like, I don't know. Honestly, I guess, honestly, I don't know that I could recommend this for, for carry as it sits. They need to come out with an enhance, plain and simple. This product line, this name, they yeah. need to burn that. And they need to come out with Gen 2. Yeah, I, I, I think I agree with Will. I, I, I don't know if you've done any research on people having the same issues, but there's no way you got two in a row that did the same thing. Yeah. And had issues, both had issues, and they have ammo quality Well, what issues. bothers me is ammo quality issues plus two pistols that had two different sets. And, and design issues with, yeah. like, the magazine and stuff, so... Yeah. So, like I said, I think that they're, they, they've got their mind in the right place, and... One thing that I want, I, I, I told Berna when I spoke to the customer support people is I said, if you make this pistol a pre-charged pneumatic and you make it run off of an air source, it won't be as temperamental in terms of the volatility that is experienced with CO2. CO2 is, is it's very temperamental in different weather conditions, okay? So by switching to a pre-charged pneumatic, yes, your customers would have to have some kind of hand pump filling station, but you would get a very stable, a very stable uh, air, air and gas consumption, um, and that would equal more accuracy. Also, with better ammo, you would, you, you would get a, a, a higher yield of accuracy, higher reliability. You don't have dust contaminating the mags and the internals. And then another thing that's interesting is is if you if you, if you if you came up with a precharged pneumatic system that had some kind of internal blowback system to where the hammer's hitting the check valve and then it's got you know a blowback to where it it automatically cocks you could have a single action trigger and then this 1911 safety would stand it, it would be a better uh, the the safety would be better you'd pull it down you'd have a single action you'd fire it. And, and then you you would it, it would be a smoother, lighter action. It would be more accurate. And so I don't know. I've got some ideas about that. I, I think that that would be really cool to see it use something other than CO2. Um, here again, uh, I know that that's kind of you know I don't know. I think that this uh, bringing up another point. Okay. The difference between this and something like a pepper spray is that the round can travel farther, unlike, say, mace or something like that, whether it be like a Kimber Pepper Blaster, which you've seen us review, okay? Uh, it travels farther, but it has to be able to hit the target. It has to be able to break. So this is that coefficient of how hard the round has to be, how hard the round has to be thrown, where you're hitting them, um, you know, in terms of it being effective. And, you know, I've seen people get shot with the, the pepper balls, and they explode, and they're, they're effective. Um, but it's just something to note that you're going to have different challenges and issues with different designs. Now, when I talk about this, and it having the first round being a low velocity and the rest being, you know, full power, okay, then you've got four strong shots that are going to be really consistent. And if you look at, like, say, the JXP, where you have a four-shot canister... You know, and they have a, a micro compact or a sub compact model, which is probably close to this. And I haven't actually held one yet, um, but you've got four shots. And so far, as of yet, there's been no real complaints about JPXs or Kimber Pepper Blasters. They always go off. They just do. They're using a pyrotechnic charge, and it's pretty solid. And also, with 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 the pyrotechnic charges they're using. We're talking about people using them in various conditions, whether it be hot, cold, and we're also talking about the fact that people have gotten them wet and they still fire. 
another status or a uh, symbol I guess you could think of is there's n there's no law enforcement agencies I can currently see using these. Um, I don't see these in mass use. What I do see is the um, the the JPXs or JXPs. I always forget what it is. They I see those in use by police, and they pretty much swear by them. Um, so, and that's something to consider too. Is is when you have that high velocity spray pattern, and it's coming out at 500 feet per second and hitting someone in a shower in a mist, versus something hitting them and then there being this secondary explosion almost you know uh wind conditions kind of apply to that because that cloud blows around whereas something that's liquid when it hits you it's going to stick so there's different different variables and i was interested in this due to the nature of the flexibility of ammo and i think it's good that you can practice with it and train with it um, and you will have to, to make this effective. This isn't something that I would recommend someone buying their wife and going, okay, just pull the trigger and it's ready to go. I think this is a, a, a weapon system in and of itself. And like Will was saying, it would kind of be nice if they did some updates to this and fine tuned it. And maybe he did some, you know, harsh testing. Like we didn't harsh test this. We didn't run it through the mud or sand. And I'm not saying it has to do perform those functions, but I think something that's a little bit better. This does feel robust, okay? I do feel like you can drop this and it's going to be just fine. But I don't necessarily think that it's internal mechanics combined with some of the quality issues we've been having with the ammo. And I don't feel like, you know, like I brought up before, this the ability to sp speed reload is really even there. Um, so here again, we, you, you have something that, you know, has anywhere from... Four, five to four shots in a mag um i don't know i i i'm i don't i'm kind of torn guys i don't know whether i i want to keep it i don't know whether i want to just sh send it back um but that's kind of where i'm at um yeah so how much it cost this is the, the these go for 350 i got mine for if i spent 350 dollars on something that didn't work and then I sent it back, and then the second one didn't work immediately. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't want it. Okay, and that it will brings up a valid point. Um, something that a lot of friends, bloody bandages and shit. Um, something that a lot of friends brought up to me was the fact that, um, the fact that you know, hey, you 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 know, bid on the beta, so to speak, like you know, and basically like, hey, dude, if I were you, I'd send it back. And this is what they were saying prior to me receiving the second one that subsequently had issues as well. Um, and this is the second one. Um, so, like I said, I, I, I don't know what I think about it yet. I, I really don't. I think that it shoots well. When it shoots, it shoots well. Um, given given all, all of the things, smooth bore barrel, relatively short it shoots well but it's i don't know um will also brought up another thing for the price three hundred dollars um yeah 350 plus tax 350 plus tax or they they sent it to me for 310 with their uh yeah but pretend they didn't they did that because they expected a review right if you had bought it like any of the other chumps that bought it yeah they, then that did it to them when they were in a self-defense situation yeah uh, to me, it would be worth four hundred dollars if it fucking worked. Right. Yeah. If it had a little bit better fit and finish, it would be worth four hundred. Yeah. But those pepper balls that they have, they look shittier compared to Walmart brand paintballs. Right. Like, I used to play paintball competitively. Yeah. And like, expensive paint is expensive. I'm sure pepper is expensive. Yeah. Uh, pepper OC powder yeah. that you put in there is expensive. I'm sure that maybe even putting that inside of a, a paint ball style ball is maybe more difficult than putting paint in one of those balls. But the fit and finish of those balls is uh, unacceptable. Yeah. If Walmart paint balls are smoother, yeah. More spherical than that. So what Will, what Will's saying is, is you know, 
that there 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 are obviously issues with the 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 main deterrent round, which is the pepper ball, and how mass produced rounds such as you know Walmart paintballs are better. And we understand that I, I'm sure that these are different rounds than actual paint rounds. The the the, the case is different, well, but still, it's is, it's not a quality round. They're talking about um, they only want you to use their round, right? But it's also a 68 caliber ball. Yeah. It's a 68 caliber spear, which is what a paintball is. Yeah. And good paintballs are roughly spherical. Um, these things are not spherical. They yeah. have a they have an equator. Yeah. That is the 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 seam to them. Right. And they are visually uh, imperfect. Right. So what Will's saying too is uh, there, there's an e- e- equator. They aren't perfectly spherical. You can see like a belt where the part lines at where they are put together. And like right here, you can see a sprue point that looks like it was ground flat. But you can also see that there's a little bit of a gap there. I don't know if you can see that. Sorry about the dirty fingernails, but uh, we're out here. But there's a dirt, there's a, pardon me, there is a gap there. Um, Once again, yeah, it's, it would be better ammo quality, better internal mechanics, okay, um, and, sh- you know, I would be interested if they, if they showed us with their pistols, their, their, uh, stress tests, and, and if they could show us that, I think that, that would be badass, because let's look at our runner-ups, okay, let's not think about, JXPs or pepper sprays. Let's just jump and compare apples to apples. Let's look at the Tipman, okay? If we paired a Tipman against this, yeah, the Tipman's definitely bigger. No one's arguing that. But the Tipman also is pretty sure fire. Mostly if you mostly if you if you go and buy a tip Tipman tip well, tips. Tipman's been in the paintball game for exactly. a long time. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying. The Tipman's been in the paintball game for a long time, so you know, between this and a Tipman, you got to kind of weigh out your options. And the one of my my cousins was saying, oh, man, I wish I had that. He has the Tipman. And I was like, I don't know, man. I wouldn't, if you've got the money, I, I kind of told him. I was like, these are experiencing problems from what I can tell. I mean, it's not it's not as refined as it, as it can be. There, there's problems. So I don't know. I, I read something about the ammo. Maybe it's the ammo made in South Africa. Maybe it's this. And honestly, I don't care where anything's made. I don't care if it's made in China, if it's made in this, if it's made in that. If I'm buying something to protect my life, I don't care where it's made. One thing that I care about, though, is that it works. In short, the Burna HD, uh, sink or fell, um, you know, sugar or scat, you know. What is it? I don't know, man. I Like I said, there's part of me that wants to keep it, but I think that this is going to go back to its manufacturer. I can't, I can't definitively say that this will protect me and my wife. Peace, Love, and Guns does not recommend it. Um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, Peace, Love, and Guns uh, doesn't recommend it. Um, and that's just based off of some of the issues, like I said, that compile, that equal. Thank you to Berna. I want to thank Berna for, for giving me a discount, working with me. Like I said, I told Berna in email, I said, I'll work with you through all of this. Um, I appreciate them being understanding, working with me. Um, don't, I just don't feel like, um, yeah, I don't feel like it, it's, it's necessarily where it needs to be, but I think they're headed in the right direction. And guys, stay tuned. I have a feeling that, you know, I, once again, uh, another thing that I wanted to kind of talk about is I, I had let Berna know. I told them, hey, I would like my money back for this product. I will be shipping it back to you this this very weekend. Um, but one thing that um, one thing that I told them was is my opinion is subject to change. And also, if they get a, good, uh, a gun that they know is good, that works, please ship it back to me. But like I said, until the following problems are worked on, um, the ammo quality improving, the mechanics, overall mechanics improving, I don't think that I can, I, I don't think that I'll be willing to carry one of these until those mechanics, mechanical problems are updated, until the ammo is made better, then, then we can forego that. Because you have to realize someone's buying this is a system, is a system of protection, and 
when they're buying that system of protection, they're buying into your company, especially if you're asking for them to use specific type ammos. So, burn HD, baby!